name of the Lord. I say praise be to the name of the Lord. Your amen is, uh, is not good enough for this uh, no political friend. I say praise be to the name of the Lord. Oh, we are coming up, we are coming up. Oh, we are coming up, we are coming up well. We are coming up well. the car 
character of God. Our God is a giver. He gave us his son. And that's why today we are giving him part of what he has given unto us in Jesus' name. I know those who are giving online, uh, it, is, uh, it is there. Uh, I know that you can see it from that far. Uh, our paper is 247, 247, and then the account number is an easy number is 325252. 325252. 325252. Wow. I want to see everyone doing that in the name of Jesus. As uh, we know that today is our day. Something must happen in the name of Jesus. So, if you have already done that, can I hear you saying amen? amen? If you have your offering with you in your hand, can I hear you saying amen? amen. Please, I want you to walk majestically with your, uh, with your offering and drop it on this altar in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Then we are putting it here, Bishop. We are putting it here, but they can be dropped there so that we don't keep coming. Just drop it there in the name of Jesus and uh, we'll really bless the Lord in Jesus' name. If you are given with your phone, allow your phone to have a contact with the altar. It's always very important. There is power in this altar in the name of Jesus. So let's come and do it very fast. Our hearts are ready. Our hearts are ready. Our hearts are ready. My God. Thank you, Mama. Our hearts are ready. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. In the name of Jesus. Mm. I was in a meeting 
and after he had prophesied to everybody, he was almost sharing the grace. And he said, who is not happy? And I lifted up my hand. I said, I'm not happy. He said, why? He said, how can I sit here? You have prophesied to almost 30 people. And me, I'm here. Does it mean that God has not said a word? And he immediately looked at my face. And he said, I am hearing this name. And that name was exactly the name of my mother. So, sometimes you put a demand on the anointing. From uh, Nigeria, yes. isn't it also? Yes. If you've been where Nigerians are, they don't say fire, fire, fire. They say fire. So you must understand the atmosphere. Yes. So one of the things that we want, we want to put the people they are supposed to feel at home. Yes. So we want them to feel at home. Yes. Somebody shout fire.
who has been our guide throughout this journey and throughout this relationship. We want to celebrate grace. Now, in our culture, Papa Sam, we don't just honor by word, we kneel down. In our culture. Now, in Kenya, they don't kneel down. Yes, maybe to God, but to people they don't. They say you are worshiping them. So, actually, it's only in this stage where women kneel down. Because my wife kneels down. So, I want to kneel down to God and to honor the grace upon your life and say thank you for obeying the voice of God. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for allowing God to allow you to come together with our mother, together with our minister Nathan and the, the, the other minister that is coming. We want to say thank you to the Yola family, the noble family. We want to say thank you for releasing you. Let's just put our hands together and celebrate the day. When, 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 I, when I know he's coming, I want to dress well because the man, the man kills it. He kills it. Come on, celebrate and postpone the supper. Now, some people will be saying about Apostle Sava and the wife, Miri. They said, uh, if you need instruments, we'll give them to you. On Sunday we have two services, but because for your sake, we will not need instruments. We will just have one service and rush to hear the word of, to hear the word of God from the man of God. As we thought that was not enough, he said, this Benz, Mercedes Benz, I am going to take it to an, for an overhaul, just to come and carry the man of God. Don't pay me anything. They demand upon the anointing. We were at the airport. Actually, he arrived earlier than me. And he's here. So we celebrate you. With your wife, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. Oh, I can see David. I want to celebrate uh, David also visiting us. Come on, celebrate Fountain of Life. Fountain of Life. Apostle did not come alone, he came with the sons. Son, come and stand up, stand up, Apostle, and our driver. And somebody, we are expecting people come from Narok, and somebody is coming from Tanzania for this meeting. We were together in Narok, specifically for this meeting. Kisumu is here. Kisumu is about 500 kilometers from here. Somebody has just traveled. Come on, lift your hand. We just want to celebrate you. She traveled all the way from Kisumu. The kingmakers, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I know you give me problems sometimes, but I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Hallelujah. I don't want to waste time. And also, we only have one speaker, two speakers. It is uh, Mama and the Apostle. They will take us the nobility way. This is their conference. I didn't want to do anything. This is their conference. Hallelujah. I'm so, I'm so excited. Yeah. A, a, a year ago, exactly a year ago, in the town called Narok, we encountered God. Now, sometimes God comes in trouble packages. If you have an attitude towards trouble, you will miss God. This is our year of open doors. And I was sharing that men, men are door. And today, seated before us, is a door to our next level. A door to our next level. Well, I also want to 
acknowledge my bundle of joy. Yes. Hey. My support system. Yeah. Lover of my life. Yeah. My navigator. Yeah. My encourager. Yeah. My strengthener. Yeah. Come on, celebrate Bishop Mary. Why did you make her a bishop? I said, if she takes care of the bishop, she qualifies to be a bishop. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, without wasting time, Amy, are we ready? Media, we have a surprise for the noblemans, for the noyons. And here is our package. Oh, how can I forget? Hillary the worship. You know, Narok is a serious place. Narok is a serious place. You are a man of God. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate and the team. We are the team. We are proud of you. Thank you so much. Okay. Are we ready? Midi, are we ready? Okay. the noblemans, but you are surprising us. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just okay. Who thinks Paul, nobleman, is a man sent by God with encouragement and prophetic mandate and is greatly used by God to preach encouragement to weak believers in the body of Christ. He is the president and founder of Encouragement Fellowship International Church also known as the Noble Family, with headquarters along the Mudipo Adama University Road, Yola, Nigeria. By the grace of God, he is a son to Prophet Elijah Begin and is a prolific author of many books that have made tremendous impact in the lives of believers globally. He has connections with great men of God around the globe, among whom are Prophet Ajeman, Akwesi Prempe, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, Apostle Joshua Selman, Apostle Michael Loroco, and the pioneer of the modern day prophetic, His Excellency Ambassador Hubert Angel. The nobleman is happily married to Prophetess Peba Noyo, and they are blessed with three sons, Noah, Nathan, and Benjamin Noyo. With a standing ovation, let us welcome the Apostle Benjamin
be lavished over us here. Thank you for making this happen today. This is nothing but the doings of the Lord. We return all the glory to you. Take charge of this service, Holy Spirit. Bless your people. Glorify your name alone. Fill this place with your power, your presence, and shift everyone to a higher level in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Celebrate Jesus some morning. Come on, lift up your head and shout fire.
so when the bishop gave me gave me the liberty I went in prayer that midnight we were praying together with mama and I just had nobility conference so I called him and said it shall be nobility conference hallelujah and what is the goal of this conference this three days is going to be like a camp to you amen when the bishop was talking about camp yesterday I was just laughing because that's what the Lord told me it's going to be a camp it's going to be like a cave adama you know cave adama where the mighty men of David were raised those who were in debt, those who were in distress, those who were discontented, all moved to David at Cave Adola. And later, that was in 1 Samuel 22. And later in 2 Samuel 23, the Bible says, Now these are the mighty men of David. The guys that were in debt, the men that were in distress, the men that were discontented, they became the mighty men of David. I don't know if you're satisfied with where you are. The Bible says, Four lepers looked at themselves. I said, why sit we here till we die? How can I remain at the same level till I die? How can I remain at the same county till I die? How can I remain at the same region till I die? They said, let us move. If we die, we die. You have to get to a place in your life. You have to get to a place in your walk with God. Where you say, no, going back is never an option for me. It's either forward or forward. That was how they put a breakthrough for their life. Became the deliverers of the nation of Israel at the time. I prophesy to someone here as you become discontented, as you become distressed, as you become dissatisfied, God will show up for you. God will launch you to the next level. God will launch you to the next level. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, this is a conference for people who are asking, why are things like this? Why have things remained this? Hey, this is your conference. If you are being dissatisfied, why have I not traveled out yet? Why have I not begun the business yet? Why have I, have I not seen the explosion I'm looking for yet? This is your conference. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. God moved you out of your houses to the cave, Adonai, to the camp here, so that he can re-energize you. So that he can reinvigorate you, so that he can re fire you and launch you to the next level of your life. You will not remain at the same level. Jesus was born in a manger, he didn't die in a manger. You will not die where you were born. I say you will not die where you were born. Shout hallelujah. Paul said, I must do my best to get to Rome at least on the day of Pentecost. I don't know if someone has said a deadline for what they are looking for. Paul said, I must get there on the day of Pentecost. Oh, I'm trusting God that after this nobility conference, I don't know about you, I am getting there. I am receiving that joy. I am receiving that settlement. I am receiving that increase. I am receiving that anointing. Shout hallelujah. You will not remain at the same level forever. God is launching you to a higher realm of glory. Ah, if you're a pastor here, you've not seen anything yet. Oh my God. See what God is doing in Yola here. When you go on Sundays, you think we're having a conference. Men hold field up. Overflow, good news field up. Dominion field up. We have to raise tents. No man soon this service. Why sit here? But there was a time I cried and said, no, this cannot be like this. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. By encounters. By encounters. Through encounters. God shifted us to the level we are at. Shout hallelujah. See, your season has come. Your time has come. Yeah. I see your season has come. Yeah. The Bible says, Arise, right, shine. Yeah. For your light. Your light. Yeah. Now the Bible says, Let there be light in the firmament. Yeah. Remember, it says, For your light has come. Yeah. Then in Genesis 1 40, it says, Let there be light in the firmament. Let there be for signs and seasons. Yeah. Your light has come. Maybe your season has come. Yeah. Your sign has come. Yeah. The sign you're looking for for the next level, it has arrived. and understanding. So when the word comes, the Bible says Joseph was in prison until his word came. And when his word came, the Bible says he was teaching senators. Senators, he was teaching senators. I see your word coming to you today. I said, I see your word coming to you today. You will teach senators. You will teach kings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. What you need to launch you to the next level. A man came to Jesus and said, My servant is sick at home. And Jesus said, Let's go. He said, No, you don't need to go because your word travels faster than your feet. No, you didn't hear. He said, 
you are what travels faster. And you are what can show through time and distance. If we are going to go there, he might die, Jesus, before you are not there. So just speak the word, and my servant will be here. And Jesus said, it says you have that understanding. Because there are people that need a touch. There are people that need physical encounter. But there are those who know that the word is enough. The Bible says the word of the Lord runs swiftly. I see that word running swiftly. Running swiftly for you. To handle your case. In the name of Jesus. So the word went ahead. And healed the servant. And the Bible says when the man was asking. When did he get healed? The Bible says. They, they responded and said yesterday. Then you remember that was the same time Jesus spoke. The moment he speaks. Your heart desires are granted. God responds to you at the instance of his word. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I see God shift to you. So the Bible says those who are in debt, meaning those with financial difficulties, they gather and keep out of them. There are three kinds of people in church every service. Those in financial distress, like those at the cave. Those who are dissatisfied, they just want to move to their next level. Amen. Amen. The Bible calls them the discontented. And those who are distressed, maybe pains, one or two things, heartbreak, sicknesses, these are the people that are always in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. You don't come to the presence of God without an expectation. Yes. You charge yourself. You tell yourself, I'm not just coming the way I came last week. I'm not just coming the way I came last week. I am coming because I need a change in my life. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I've seen the glory of God over this church.
This is just an introduction. I've been seeing some two letters waiting for the evening service. The power of God is so mighty here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So this conference seeks to enlighten believers about their inheritance in Christ Jesus. It seeks to enlighten believers about their inheritance in Christ Jesus. It seeks to spur them into claiming their inheritance in Christ and walking in its fullness. I said number one, it seeks to enlighten believers. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says, The eyes of your eye, the eyes of your heart being enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense? So what is your inheritance in Christ Jesus will be revealed to you at this conference. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And it seeks to encourage you to claim your inheritance and walk in its reality. Hallelujah. It seeks to raise sons and daughters for the Lord. It seeks to raise sons and daughters for the Lord. For the Lord. For the Lord. Notice I say, for the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four, it seeks to empower every believer to function as king and priest unto the Lord. It seeks to empower believers to function as kings and priests unto the Lord. You know the Bible says in Revelation 5.10, He has made us kings and priests unto our God. Revelation 5.10. And finally, to help believers rediscover, regain, and realign themselves. It helps seeks to help believers rediscover, rediscover, regain, and realign themselves with their essence in Christ. With their essence in Christ. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now we are raising nobles for the Lord in this conference. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let me take my time to explain who nobles are. Yes. Amen. Nobles are a privileged class of people, often receiving, you know, receiving their nobility through hereditary title. Nobles are a special class of people. In every society, in every nation, you have the noble family, you have nobles. Talking about nations, you know, politically. Now, nobles are a special class of people that belong to the aristocracy. Now let me explain, uh, explain to you the aristocracy. The aristocrats are the highest ruling class in a society. Do you have that in Kenya? Families that produce presidents, kings, those are the aristocrats. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are the highest ruling class. As a matter of fact, you can call them the decision makers. Hallelujah. So when I saw this, I knew that we are in the aristocratic family. Kingmakers, you are not getting what I'm saying. This family is the decision maker. You are the kingmakers. You are the one producing leaders. So nobles belong to the aristocracy, the highest ruling class in the society. So when you go to, to England, you know the noble, the nobility title begins from uh, the duke for men. You call them duke. But those are actually nobles and they are actually descendants of kings. They are royalty. So a noble is a descendant of the royalty. Shout hallelujah. It's a product of royalty. And that is who you are today. Shout hallelujah. And that is what this conference seeks to achieve. For you to become a noble in Christ Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Are you getting blessed here? It is a socially or politically privileged class who are titles, whose titles are confirmed by decree or by inherit, you know, or by inheritance. The nobles are people whose titles are conferred upon them by actually decrees or by inheritance. The Bible says concerning Jesus, by inheritance he has obtained a more excellent name. And we are Christians today because by inheritance that name has become our name. And let me tell you something, I think the best thing that can happen to every believer is to be called a Christian. You know the meaning of a Christian? A child of God. The one looking like Christ. You know, there are so many revelations that are flying in the air, so we are no longer Christians, we are, no, we are Christians. Amen. We are like Christ. We, we, should, we shouldn't complicate Christianity, please. 
Shout hallelujah. We are Christians. We are looking like Christ. We are descending from Christ. Shout hallelujah somebody. Is someone getting blessed? I said, are you getting blessed here? So we have obtained our nobility by being in Christ Jesus. Now having established this, in every society, you have nobles, people that are responsible for the leadership. They are king makers in that society. They are decision makers in that society. They are people that steer the waters in that society. And that is the people God is raising here today. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Are you getting blessed somebody? God is raising you to steer the waters. God is raising you to be the movement. You are not waiting for any movement. When you arrive, you become the movement. Shout hallelujah. You are not waiting for someone to come and shake things or shake the city. You are the shaking of the city. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Are you being blessed here? Now let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. I'll just take my time and teach you now. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. And this is where we call our scripture. Yet I have planted you a noble vine, a seed of highest quality. Let's stop there. Yet I have planted you what? A noble vine, a seed of highest quality. Don't you ever shout, I'm a seed of highest quality. Tell another neighbor, I'm a seed of highest quality. Shout hallelujah. One more neighbor, tell them I'm a seed of highest quality. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Yet I have planted you a noble vine, a seed of highest quality. And that is what I see God doing in this meeting in the name of Jesus. He's planting you and raising you as a noble vine. What is a vine? A vine is a climbing tree. You know a vine? A grapevine. It's a climbing tree, a rolling tree. Uh, the simplest example I can give you is tomato plant. You know how it grows? Yeah. It does not grow open like this straight. It runs on the ground. And it needs a stem. So it needs a hard surface to grow around, to stand on. Because on its own it cannot stand. That's why when Jesus came, he said, I am divided on the branches. He said, without me, you can do nothing. Because the vine is not designed to depend on itself. The vine is designed to depend on something, to lean on something. So sometimes it can run through the wall and grow the wall. And if you cross over the wall, when you allow the vine to grow around the wall, it grows upward and then crosses the wall. What is God telling you? That you are meant to cross barriers. You are not meant to be limited by your family, by your society. You are not meant to be limited by your education. You are meant to cross over barriers. Shout hallelujah. But then he said, yet I have planted you. And there's something I've discovered about God. Before he gives you explosion, he plants you. Before he allows you to grow, he plants you. Before the Lord, you are a seed. That is why the Bible says, and the, and the seeds are the sons of the kingdom, the children of the kingdom. Now, men plant crops, God plants men. Men plant crops, God plants men. People plant crops, God plants men. What do you cultivate in Kenya? Tea. You have this maize, rice. You cultivate rice? Uh huh. And what else? Millet? Coffee. Uh huh. Tea. Yeah, tea. You mentioned that earlier. You don't cultivate yam here? Wow. Yam is from Nigeria. But have you ever eaten yam? Yes. So where do you get yams from? From Lagos. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, that's amazing. Now, if you have a seed, when you look at every seed you carry, it has the potential of a tree in itself. I can give you one crop of maize, but if you can use your imagination, you know that very soon, few weeks, few months, it grows into a big plant. So every seed has the potential of a plant in itself. And now when you are planting a seed, you are not planting the seed to have the seed. You are planting the seed to have the plant that will be produced from the seed. And the Bible says, yet I have planted you. When I want to work with you, I plant you. And some of you feel like you are going through low moments. That's one way God plants people. 
It takes you long to bring you up. Sometimes he embarrasses you before he glorifies you. When he was about to heal the man that was born blind, the Bible says he made spittle. He made mud out of spittle, spat on the ground, rubbed it on the face of the man. Was that not an embarrassment? But he knew was about to come. He embarrassed him before he glorified him. Before Jesus came up, he had to go down into the river Jordan. He went down to be baptized. When he came up, there was a divine announcement. So when you feel like you are going low, it is because God is announcing you. How does he plan people? He allows them to go through moments of shame, moments of disgrace, moments of being unknown. And then from that point, he raises them up. That is why the Bible says, he raised the poor from the dust. What does that mean? Because he has planted them there. So he brings them out of the dust. When God created man in the spirit, the Bible says he went to the dust to form him. Because when God creates you, he takes you down. He goes down first to make you. So you have been planted. Whatever you are going to become, God has established in the spirit. But what is going on now is you are you coming up from the ground. You are rising from your lowest moment. You are rising from your place of shame. You are rising from your place of being forgotten. Shout hallelujah. So that disappointment that happened was a planting. That time when there was no invitation was a planting. Amen. Amen. Have you ever met people and they say, where have you been? Are you around? You have been planted. If they couldn't see you, at least you were planted. Ah, have you been around? Joe, where have you been? Ah, Peter, where have you been? Have you been around? At least you have been planted. So if people are still asking you that question, it is because you are buried. And you are coming out as a plant. You're coming out as a plant. You're coming out as a plant. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. He said, I have planted you a noble vine. A noble vine means a vine of honor. A vine with dignity. Shout hallelujah. God does not rush his process because we are in a hurry. God rush, you know. <laughs> God takes his time to prepare us because of the bigger picture. He does not rush his process because we are in a hurry. Sometimes you may be the only to manifest God as rush. Yes. Yes. Take, take your time. Go through the process. Job said, he knows the way I take. And when I come out, I shall be like God. Yes. The Bible says there is a place where gold is refined. God takes gold into the fire. If you see a vessel of gold, it means they have been through the fire. Don't just celebrate the glamour. Don't just celebrate the glory. Remember, every gold you see pass through fire. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I have planted you. So meaning nobody can uproot you. Amen. Bishop, nobody can uproot you. King makers, nobody can uproot you. Amen. Why? Because the Lord has planted you. Amen. A noble vine. And he said what? A seed of highest quality. You are the big, you are the highest species of human beings on the face of the earth. A Christian is the highest species of human beings on the face of the earth. We are of the highest quality, the best quality you can ever get. Yes. Do you know that of the crops you have, there are lower quality seeds, lower quality crops. Sometimes I say, no, this one is better, but if you don't have money, you can manage this one. Don't rush the process. What God is bringing out of your life is what nations are looking for. I said, if this is what nations are looking for. If you are digging a well and you want clean water, you need to dig deeper. Yes. If you are in a hurry to just get water, you can get dirty water, muddy water. But if you want the best water, you keep digging, keep digging, keep digging until you until a clean water, until clean water, the purest water comes out of the earth for you. And that's what God is doing with you. He's digging you deeper. He's digging you up. He's digging you deeper so that the best of you can come out. Shout hallelujah. Sit down in the presence of the Lord. A seed of highest quality. Yet I have planted you. So God plants his people. God does not rush them. When Paul was called, he said, I went to Arabia and stayed there. After 40 years, I went and met Peter. Paul didn't rush the ministry. We celebrated 13 letters he wrote, but we forget, we easily forget that Paul was in Arabia. Paul was hidden. There was a time he was not known. But we forget the story. We just focus on the glory. God plans his people. Tell your neighbor, God plans his man. Tell your neighbor, God plans his man. He shouts hallelujah. I see the Lord planting someone here today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said, I see the Lord planting someone here today. 
in the name of Jesus. Yeah. One of the ways God plants his people is in the house of God. That's one of the ways. There are many ways. But number one is in the house of God. Where you get good teachings, receive good preaching that are designed to help your life. And I believe King Makers is one house for you. Yeah. The Bible says those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the cup of our God. So God plants you in his house so that you can flourish in his court. What is the cup of God? The field of politics. Your place of manifestation is the court. But the house of God is the soil on which you are planted. And then, oh my God. Can I go deeper? Oh yes. The kind of seed you are determines the soil you'll be planted on. So if God sees that there is a kingly anointing upon your life, he sends you to a kingly ministry where you are planted so that you can reach nation. When I came, I was reading this. When I sat down, I read this. He said, raising an informed, transformed, holy, spirit-filled people to influence the nations. And then I see the flags. I said, no, this is truly for the nations. So if you find yourself on a soil like this, it's because it is because God has an international mandate on your life. Yeah. International mandate on your head. Yeah. But this is your soil. Yeah. So you can't pick rice. Do you have peanuts and granules? Yes. You can't pick rice and plant and plant rice on the granite field. No. That soil is not for it. You can't pick granite and take it to the coffee yeah. soil. Yeah. It can't work there. Yeah. Every plant has its soil. Yeah. You are here not by accident. You are here because this is the soil you need. This is the plant you need to grow in the things of God. And this conference is giving you that ground, that nutrient, that nourishment you need to rise to a higher height, to rise to a higher level. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is someone getting blessed here? I said, are you getting blessed here? In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship planted in Christ Jesus. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has ordained before time that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. What is God saying? You are his best at work on display. Shout hallelujah. You are his best piece on display. You know, there are people that look at themselves, they hit their nose, they hit their legs, they hit their head, they hit their skin color, they hit everything about themselves. But when God made you, the Bible says it was written, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Angels were clapping, cherubims were clapping, seraphims were clapping. Now you are complaining at your nose, the angels are, that are looking from heaven, are appreciating the preach the creation of God because they see they look beyond the flesh and they look at the spirit in man. That's why when Job came, he said, There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. So when the angels look at you, they don't see the flesh, they see the spirit. The flesh is only our container. Shout hallelujah. So whether you are tall, it is you just have a tall container. If you are short, you have a short container. If you are dark, you have a dark container. But what matters is the spirit within. Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell your neighbor your nobility. Your Tell another neighbor your nobility. Your nobility. Shout hallelujah. Yes. So he said we have been planted for good works that we should walk in them. So when God created you, there are good works. He has seen ahead that he wants you to carry out to do when you come to the face of the earth. So that desire in you to become a medical doctor, that desire to become a lawyer, that desire to become an engineer was what you were created in heaven for. So that you can be God's representative in those places. Amen. Shout out hallelujah. hallelujah. He's a minister. You know, we just met he's an engineer. He's working with the oil company in Nigeria. But, but he's a minister. When he, when he comes to church on Sundays, and he serves like every other person, standing at the gate, welcoming people. Because God plants us, oh my God, in the evening I'll take my time to talk about planting. God plants us wherever we find ourselves. So even if you find yourself relocated to a new environment, it is God planting you there. So that when you are living, you must have impacted one or two persons. Everywhere I lived in my life, before I got married, if I, even after I got married, I impacted people there. They came to the church where I was. 
In fact, some of them became members of the church. One particular lady, we were living in a big you know, compound, who was not even greeting us there. She didn't know that we were, we were men of God. No greetings. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then, by the time she discovered that we were men of God, we had left, you know, by the time she was discovered, we had left the compound. And then she came to the church. So, ah, you are the pastor over this church that says, uh, I'm the one you are not greeting. I'm the one you are not <laughs> Till then, she is a member of the church. Amen. When God sends you to these places, He's sending you there because He's planting you. Amen. You are not a mystic. Yes. There is a reason why you didn't get admission to study in the school you wanted to study. You got a different admission in the yes. because God wanted to plant you there. Yes. There is a reason why you couldn't get accommodation where you wanted. There is a reason why you couldn't live where you wanted to live. Because God wanted to plant you where you are today. Amen. There is a reason why the visa couldn't come up. Because God wants to take God, I mean God wants to take his time to plant you. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Every disappointment is an appointment with God. Amen. Every disappointment is an appointment with God. Amen. So if you feel like there's a disappointment, no, God has just extended your appointment. <laughs> so that you can have some encounter, some profits for the kingdom of heaven. So he said, I have planted you in noble vine. And he said, we are his workmanship. So when God created you, he put you on this place and said, oh, look at the bishop. Oh, look at this sister. Oh, look at that lady. And angels were watching from heaven. And then they shouted, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you take care of him. Someone is being blessed here today. Do not look down on yourself. Do your beginning be small. Your latter end shall greatly increase. I said, do your beginning be small. Your latter end shall greatly increase. Shout hallelujah. If I tell you my story, if I tell you where God picked me from, if I tell you how God began with me, I resigned from my lecturing job, went to stay in one, in, in an apartment somewhere with my brothers because the Lord had called me. So people thought I was mad. I said, no, I've heard the call. Yeah. I, I went, I went to tender my resignation letter. I said, are you okay? I said, I'm okay. Do I look like a madman? <laughs> are you okay? Are you okay? Are you sure? I said, I'm very sure. I've been having encounters with God. And some of them gave negative prophecies. And then immediately I went into ministry. God asked me to go on 40 days fast. Then I became very lean. Now I have just resigned, got to ministry, and became very lean. And they didn't know why I was lean. They thought I was suffering. They didn't know that I was fasting. As a matter of fact, I couldn't go out of my house to visit some people because I knew that a lady so said, What is this? What happened to you? In fact, that day I just broke my fast in the afternoon. I said, no, I, no, I need to eat. I can't be looking beautiful. But God was planted. Yeah, are you getting blessed here? Yes. You are too quiet for me. Are you getting blessed here? Yes. But God was planted. And then, yes, God by, we started 33 of us. I mean, we started five of us, the ministry. Then we moved to another location, 33 of us. Then we moved to another location, the hospital chapel in Yola there. 43 of us. Then from 43, we grew to 70, Amen. to 150, Amen. to 200, Amen. to 300, then to 500. Amen. Then when we were living there, because that was a temporary place, we were 600 in number. Amen. And then the Lord gave the instruction, start church. Amen. When some people looked at us, they said, you are finished. From interdenomination, you want to switch to church, you are gone. And the first Sunday service, we had a number of people. There were no, there were no seats for people. And then from 600 grew to 800, Amen. to 1,000, to 2,000, to over 2,000 now. Amen. Why? Because we were planted. Amen. Don't rush the process. God is taking you from glory to glory. Amen. From place to place. Amen. And sometimes when God is planting you, He does not plant you alone. He plants you with everything you have. He plants you and your seed. Have you ever attended a meeting and you felt God talking? I'm not talking about pastors, men of God manipulating you. You felt the need to give. You gave everything on you. I'm not talking about manipulative giving. I'm talking about giving out of conviction. I found myself in that situation. <laughs> when I removed my shoes with my wife, I didn't know what to give. I just removed my shoes. 
I removed my watch. I wanted to remove my shirt, but I was no, sir. You, you cannot do that. And he said, what you have done today will speak for you in years to come. Amen. And it is speaking today. Amen. I said, it is speaking today. Amen. I said, it is speaking today. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going through the period of planting, so I want to talk to you. Stand up. There are three anointings on you. The psalmist anointing. Uh -huh. I've seen that God has given you the anointing of a worshiper. Mm. There is a David's anointing on your head. David. David. Amen. Is there a David in the congregation? Is there any David? Is there any, anyone connected to David in the congregation? Yes. Who is David? Yes, Stan. Yeah. Brother Stan. There is fire from you to my mother. Mm. You know her? Yes. No, stand. Just stand here. How do you know her? What is your name? Mildred. Huh? Mildred. Mildred who? Musaba. I'm also seeing her name around you. There's someone bearing Mama's name around you. Your name is Mary, right? Yes. There is a Mary around the family. Yes. Who is that? My cousin. Yes. Yes. I see the letter K around you. Yes. What is that? Kadeni, my second name. Yes. Son of Jesus. Do I know you? Do I know you, sir? No. I've seen the Lord elevating you. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There's too much glory. I see the blessings of children around you. I've seen these children are gonna be like prophets of God. Huh? I call them prophets. You call them prophets. That's who the Lord is showing me. They are prophets. Thank you, Jesus. This is just an introduction. There is a spirit of the psalmist on you. There is a spirit of a priest on you. Yes, sir. Then there is a kingly anointing on you. Yes, I know him very well. Have you been there? I've been there once. To a conference? To a conference. I was supposed to be, to be in another one yesterday, but I could not manage to go because uh, we were running up and down for this. I've seen my like, leadership meeting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is it? Yes, sir. They do leadership meetings. Uh, yes, sir. Celebrate Jesus and Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've seen you yeah. at the face on billboards in Kenya. Yeah.
sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My goodness. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen that. So, now you may be wondering is there anything resisting in the lost? No. Mm. You're just waiting for your time. Hey, hey. I'm sitting. I go, Simo, 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 Simo. There is a name on S like that. So, Simo, Simo, Simo. Um, I know that Simon. Wait, do you know a place called Bolano? Is it Bolano? I've seen myself like I, I've seen Koboko. Mm -hmm. I've seen Koboko. Mm -hmm. You know Koboko? I've heard about it. I've seen myself moving from that place. Mm -hmm. I saw some prayer you prayed mm -hmm. that are affecting Uganda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've seen this prayer. Mm -hmm. Subduing forces around River Nile. Yes, around around some villages. Mm -hmm. and you may not know because I saw that there was a time you went into praise and worship station. Mm -hmm. You were just giving God praise. You you are not raising prayer points. Mm -hmm. And those prayers went into Uganda. Yes, sir. Went into Nairobi. Yes, sir. And went into Mombasa. Yes, sir. And I saw the prayers we were praying mm -hmm. shaking territories. Amen. We were not on the impact of the prayer. <laughs> and the Lord told me to tell you. Hey. One, two, three. This is April, right? Yes, in June. From June, the explosion is beginning. Hey, yeah. I see the explosion is beginning. I see it. You will begin to see pockets of it now. Mm. But in June, it will come in full flame. Hey, man, I see it. I don't know what December means to the family. Mm. I don't know what December means to the family. Mm. But there's an unusual encounter coming also in December. Yes, a program that will move you out of Kenya here. Yeah. When we do our anniversary, we began our ministry in December. I began, I stopped, then I began in December. In December. Yes, sir. You've gone through a lot. Hey. Now, the kinky oil. Yes, sir. The priestly oil. Yes, sir. Uh, and the priestly oil. Yes, sir. We'll begin to operate today. Hey, man. I'm you. I'm a spirit. Do I have a commission to arrange you? Yes, yes, sir. I have a commission to Yes, sir. You give me the oil. Uh -huh. I've also seen a prophetic oil on you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've seen you calling names. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And places. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I've seen the prophetic on you. Yes, sir. My goodness. You know how I saw it? I've seen people in my family, Prophet Yuba Yes, sir. I've seen them standing behind me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. You came for the prophet, sir. You came for me, sir. You came for me. My goodness. Have you relocated to a, to a new place recently? Yes, yes. You've relocated? Yes, yes. I've seen you moving to where? From where to where? We were in town, we came to uh, where we are now in, in the Bakas, and also we moved from a house where we went to a new place. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, the Lord said, I should tell you that that was the sign of your shift. Hey, Amen! <laughs> Now he thought he was moving physically. He didn't know that it was the angels of the Lord. Amen. And were sent to move him to a new level. Amen. But why do I hear David on you? That anointing is resting upon your life. Amen. How much time do I have? Ten minutes? We are coming back in the evening. I will try to stop so that we come back in the evening. Huh? What are you saying, sister? Thank you, Jesus. This man is a great man. I've seen that you're full of wisdom also. Yes, sir. I've seen you listening to Oyedepo at one time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listening to T.D. Jakes at one time. Yes, sir. You, you are a man with, with vast resources in the spirit. Yes, sir. And I've seen that God is launching you even into campuses. Amen. Amen, sir. Where you will do programs for the youth. Amen. I activate. 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 The kingly, the priestly. That's the prophetic. Let it manifest. Let it manifest in its fullness. You will soar like an eagle. 
Your children are prophets. Amen. I've seen that they are prophets. Amen. And God is raising them for your sake. Amen. You love this man so much. And you pray for him very well. The Lord said every prayer of yours. And you know sometimes he tells you big things. Big, big things. Yes. And sometimes you wonder, wow. <laughs> when will this happen? Very true. <laughs> this is the season. Amen. I establish Amen. what God has begun with you Amen. from today Amen. in Jesus' name. I've seen, I'm looking for someone that has a child, but I'm not seeing marriage. I just saw a child, yeah. but there's no marriage. I'm a mom to three kids. Huh? I'm a mom to three kids. No husband.
in my spirit, Deborah. 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 You know Deborah's anointing? Yes. It rest on you. Oh, 
again. In, in, you know, in Nigeria, we, we, we cannot have a program Friday morning. So I was wondering, wow. I said, you know, can you come on Friday like this? <laughs> Friday morning. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to just you know, relax a little and then come back in the evening where I can have time. I know some of you came from work this morning. You came from work. Or, or how do you walk in Kenya? <laughs> Huh? Okay, two four seven. Okay. No wonder you know our system is morning, then evening. Eight in the morning to two p.m. or to four p.m. At most five. You. Know. Sometimes we will just work from morning till evening. That's why most of our programs are in the evening. So you do two four seven here. Wow. God bless Kenya. God bless my close to her and I hear the angel shouting husband are you married? Is she married? Yes. Where is the husband? Where is your husband? To where? Huh? He's traveling to Kisumu. To Kisumu. What is he doing there? Uh, he went to return a funeral. No, the Lord said I should cover him because I saw an arrow flying against the man. He went to attend the funeral, but I saw an arrow hitting him there. And I saw that while he will start having migraine, and while on the way, I've seen him like gasping for breath. So the Lord said, I should arrest the issue instantly. Yeah. We stop the demon of death. Yeah. We stop the arrow of death. Yeah. We stop the spirit of death. Yeah. I saw that before this one, there was another funeral. Someone died. Then I'm seeing this one, and the Lord said, No. This is not Noah. I'm seeing the letter J. I don't know I'm seeing the letter J. I see the letter J. 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 J for like John, James, or whatever. I'm seeing the letter J. Huh? I have two sons. One is John, the other one is John. Who are those? My sons. Huh? My sons. Huh? Celebrate Jesus, Sarah. The Lord said they are covered as well. You are covered as well. No demon will kill your husband. Congratulations. Now, my seven percent of you is done. Celebrate Jesus so Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop. I pray for you too, this morning that whatever you lay your hands on to do shall prosper. Rise to your feet, everyone. Rise to your feet. Whatever you touch shall be blessed. It shall be blessed. It shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Bring down your hands. Break down your hands. Maybe, maybe my accent is too strong for you. I don't know. Nigerian accent. Okay. You know, you know, we say pastor there. Say pastor, pastor. <laughs> you know, so forgive our accent. Doctor, doctor, professor, professor. You know, <laughs> amen. If you are not born again, you want to give your life to Jesus. Lift up your right hand. I want to pray for you. You want to be dedicate your life to Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Do it quickly. I want to pray for you. Whether you're in front or at the back there, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Lift up your hand. Come. God bless you. Come quickly. Come, 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 come and meet me here. Come. If you want to come, come quickly. Come quickly. This is just an introduction. You want to give your life to Jesus. Come quickly. Stand here. Put your right hand on your chest. If you are coming, come quickly. Celebrate God for their lives of the crown. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Start a new thing in my life. I accept you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may take your sins in the presence of the Lord. Come celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, somebody. Celebrate Jesus, somebody. Hallelujah. How many have been blessed? How many have been blessed? We can do better than that. Come and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just a quick one. Uh, we'll be breaking uh, up to 33. Exactly the kingdom voices you begin to sing. So that exactly at 4, we'll be handing over the mic to. Uh, 
the apostle number one. How many have been blessed by that grace? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Shall we stand to our feet? Shall we stand to our feet as my wife takes you so that hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Can somebody come and whisper to me concerning lunch? Quickly, quickly. Can somebody come and whisper to me? Because I know we are not going anywhere because there is something to eat. Okay, so you, uh, you, you, you hang around here. Come and somebody help, help uh, the servers to, to go to the, to the, help them, help them quickly. Yeah, that's my, Mr. Chairman, that's my chairman, that's my chairman. Celebrate for Mrs. Rostam, come on, celebrate. Let us come here, come on. Hallelujah. They are looking for these people. These people are dangerous. Hallelujah. So, uh, food has been, they are going to collect food, so we wait for food here. Have food and don't go anywhere. And uh, we'll be blessed. In the afternoon, we have prophetic and the deliverance. This was just an introduction. So invite somebody. Take your phone, share the link. Okay, we'll be throwing the link on the group so that you share the link with people so that people will be able to come. This is just the beginning. This is just the introduction and the Lord has been good to us. Let's just lift our hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to honor you, we want to bless you, we want to adore you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. This is just the beginning. He that has begun a good work in us shall be faithful to accomplish it. Bless your people and bless the food they shall eat. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us for the afternoon service. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. There are books that are being sold at the back there. There are books. Just pass through there and get something to read. God bless you.